Hello, chess fans. Welcome to another edition of Chess Chat, a program designed to give you, the viewer, a better understanding and an appreciation of the wonderful world of chess. I am your host, George Marijanian, Program Director of the Wachusa Chess Club at, the, at Fitchburg State College. This club meets every Wednesday evening from 7 to 11 in room C199 of the McKay Campus School at the college. And with me, once again, is my trusty co-host, the champion, the current champion of the Wachusa Chess Club, and one of the strongest and most active chess players in North Central Massachusetts, Martin Lee. Hello, George. Good to see you again. Always a pleasure to see you, Marty, every month when we do Chess Chat. And Marty, today we're going to focus our attention on a very special match that was just, just finished several days ago. It was Thursday, February 26th, in Sofia, Bulgaria. It was a match between Gatakamsky of the United States, who is the highest rated player in the United States, and he was challenging uh, Veselin Topolov of Bulgaria, who happens to be the highest rated player in the world. Right, he's even higher rated than the current world champion. Yes, the current world champion is Vish Vish Vishwanathan Anand of India, right. and Topolov actually has him outrated by five points. It's just a five point <laughs> differential. So this match was to see who would be challenging Anand for a world title match later in the later this right. year and it's refreshing to see that we finally have a, a cycle of world champ a recognized world champion and a cycle of determining a challenger we were almost 15 years without with competing claims and without a yes. really recognized world champion so in it's, 1993 it's really refreshing to have that you had you had actually a rival organization the professional chess players association which challenged the world chess federation for the right to to conduct the world championship right. so for those years 1993 until uh, yeah, 15 years that right. we that Anand actually became the, of India became the undisputed right. world champion right. by beating uh, Vladimir Kramnik. Uh, right, and we spoke about talked about that match in a previous. Yes, we program. gave that match too. Okay. So this is a match as we as I said was to determine who was going to play Anand, and of course our hopes were, were we pin, we we pinned our hopes on Kamsky to win, right. uh, but unfortunately he lost the match. Right. Uh, uh, it was uh, he, it was, it was the final score was four and a half to two and a half. It was now, a scheduled eight game. Match. Now Kamsky got a Kamsky has claimed that he has a plan to become the world champion. Oh yes, so this sets him back a little bit. It does, and you know it's interesting. You know he came to this country when he was right about fourteen years old, right. nineteen eighty nine, and he came with his father Rustam. He's originally from the Ukraine. Uh, no, 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 actually from Siberia. From Siberia. He was born. He he and his father they were born. He was born in Siberia. They're of Tatar origin, right. ethnic background. Uh, so he and his father came to play in the New York Open tournament in 19, March 1989, and they decided to stay because the father, who was, by the way, he was a boxer, <laughs> says, I'm not going back to the U Soviet Union, you know, which was cr in the process of crumbling anyways, right. and I'm not going back to the Soviet Union because uh, if you're not a Russian, your chances of having a future chess career in the Soviet Union uh, are very dim. So he stayed. They actually, basically, it's defection. Mm -hmm. They stayed here, and, and Gada Kamsky grew up in the United States. He's as American as, you know, right. as uh, you and I. Uh, but again, he is currently ranked 17th in the world, and again, he was pitted against the number one rated right. player in the world. But he took a break from chess. He didn't play competitive oh, yes. chess for about 10 years or you so. You know, he played Anatoly Karpov, you know, for the, the, the World Chess Federation world title, in 1996, I believe, 1995, mm -hmm. and he lost the match. And then he, it was 95. He stopped cold. He quit chess. And then, but he, had, he did come back in 1999. He went, he went off to school. He, he spent uh, maybe a year studying medicine. He gave that up. And then he actually has a degree in law. He went to law school. So he, had, he actually had a, an absence from chess, but he has come back, and uh, he is our number one player. Right. So we had pinned a lot of hopes on, on, on him actually following the steps of, uh, of Bobby Fischer, right. you know, our, our world so, champion. Now, how did he come? Now, Topolov is, is the highest rated player in the world. Yes. And how did Komsky get to be 
get into this match? How did he, being only ranked 17th in the world or thereabouts, why, how did he get to play against Topolov? How did that come about? There was a series of uh, tournaments or matches where he actually just, you know, just won these matches. Okay, so he came out on top. But he came out on top, right. Okay. It's actually, there's a process where you actually play a series of matches and you work your way okay. up to play the challenge. Right. But let's get into this game okay. because this is actually uh, a, a fascinating game in which uh, Komsky is white. This is, by the way, this is game two, two. of a, a match that actually ended in seven games. It was scheduled for eight. It was scheduled eight, but it was clinched by Topolov uh, in the seventh game. The seventh game. Right. So, uh, Topolov, uh, Komsky white Komsky. opens with, Komsky is white. He plays E2 to E4, which again we've seen many times. It, um, it, open, it uh, puts a pawn on a center square attacking the uh, D5 and the F5 square. It opens up important diagonals for the queen and the white squared bishop. It's a good opening move. Okay. So, Topolov, in response to e4, plays his pawn on e7 to e5. So e5 is played for the same reason. Opens up the diagonal for the dark squared bishop and, and also the queen. Uh, and it, it, it's contesting. We, the fight is over the center, center control. Right. And keeping that in mind, Komsky, for his second move, plays his uh, knight to f3, developing a knight, Attacking the e5 pawn. Black has to do something about that attack. Okay, and the most logical uh, response to uh, the attack on the pawn is to play the knight on b8 and play at the c6. Knight c6 is Topolov's second move. Right. Defends the pawn. And in this position, we've talked about a number of different things. White could develop his other knight. He could develop his bishop, make use of this diagonal, play it to c4. We've seen that on several occasions. Uh, Komsky chooses to play his bishop out to b5. Uh, and we've seen that before. It, right. In a previous program, we did a program on the Dr. Tar Zygmunt Tarash right. against the Mikhail Chugorin, and uh, uh, Dr. Tarash played bishop b5, and this is known as, uh, what is this opening called? The sp well, the Rui Lopez or the Spanish opening. Okay, Spanish, most of the world calls it the Spanish opening. In English-speaking countries, uh, it's known as the Rui Lopez. It's named after a 6th century Spanish priest who advocated this against knight c6. Okay, so Topolov now has choices here. The most common uh, reply to bishop b5, the Spanish opening, Spanish game, is to put the question to the bishop immediately with a6. And, and that's, uh, again, very popular. But what Topolov played was knight on g8. He plays knight f6. He plays the immediate attack on the pawn on e4. Right. All right. So. And this goes by the name of the Berlin defense. Is that be, right? Yes, it is known by okay. the Berlin defense because the uh, players in Germany, in Berlin, Germany, popular, actually was very popular with them. Right. Uh, now, Topolov has been known to play this. Um, he's usually used it in times when he wants to play a cautious, more passive game. Uh, Komsky obviously would know this in his pre-match preparations, and so he decides to take it to a little bit um, of a complicated start. He's going to castle at this point, leaving, leaving for the moment. It looks as though that's undefended. Right. And Topolov now, on his move, can take this pawn. That's, that actually is a variation, uh, and White doesn't have to worry about actually losing this pawn because uh, white can respond with d4 and actually uh, do an attack on this pawn, bring the rook over to e1. Right. So It leads to an attack right down It leads to an attack. Right. So the white doesn't have to worry about losing the pawn. But what Topolov did, he did not take the pawn on e4. He did not put the question to the bishop, which he could have done on the third move. Instead, he plays a very surprising move. Right. He plays bishop on f8 to c5. Right. So bishop c5 is his fourth move. Right. Now, he's developing, a, he's got a piece to develop. He's ready to castle. Right, he's and, ready to castle. However, what uh, does Komsky do uh, in response to this, Bishop C5? Well, Komsky at this point plays, uh, he, he plays knight take the pawn on E5, which again at first glance looks as though it loses the knight because uh, black can play knight take knight. Right. But he can regain, he regains the yes. piece. Yes, let's show, let's show the viewers. Sure that actually uh, this, this, this uh, knight, which is not pr protected, if black were to take, knight takes e5, white would be able to regain the piece, 
by forking. He could just simply fork it with pawn to d4. And attack both the right. bishop and the knight. And he's getting ready to push these pawns right down. Yeah. He can centralize an attack. So nothing is gained f for black by, uh, on this, this is the move right here. Right, knight take. Knight here, okay. So nothing is gained by, for black by taking the knight. But what black did say, okay, I'm not going to take the knight on e5, but I am going to take, take the, the pawn. pawn. Right. So knight takes e4 is his fifth move. All right. So now what does uh, Komsky do? Well, now he, he chooses to, he's going to attack this, uh, attack this knight, and he's going to develop his queen to e2, which gives a little extra help to the bishop there, and it, 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 um, it attacks the knight, but it also puts the queen on the on the a file aimed right at Black's king. So it's a fairly aggressive move in its All right. Point. All right, so what uh, Topolov did now is on his sixth move, he played, and now he does take the knight on e5. Knight takes e5 is his move. All right, so he's now a knight ahead, but of course, right. uh, white plays, can, can... He plays d4, forking the two pieces. So now, actually, the, the knight is attacked by the queen, and these two pieces are attacked by the pawn. So, oh, so we have three, <laughs> all three pieces attacked. Right. All right. So he has to give back a piece. All right. The question is, how is he going to do this? So on, uh, on d4, what he does is, okay, he says, what I'm going to do is I'm going to play queen e7. He plays queen to e7, uh, allowing now... Right. Actually, white, white can, had, allowing white to make the choice of which piece he's going to take. Yes, that's Rather true. Rather than trying to save one, any one of the pieces, he wants to wait and see which... He's going to develop the piece, and he wants to see what white does at this point. All right, so, and white has, again, can take any one of these pieces. Queen takes e4, right. or uh, can take the, the pawn knight. d, the, this pawn on d4 can take right. the pawn on e5, but what did he do? Right, he, ta he decides to take the bishop on c5. So d takes c5. c5. for the eighth move, right. All right, well now, he's won, he's got a piece, he got a piece back, and he's also threatening to win an, uh, another piece. So he has to, this next move is forced. He has to play, Topolo has to play, knight takes c5 on his eighth move. Right. All right, so he saves the, uh, that piece. The queen defends the knight, so it, it looks okay. Right. Now, what's interesting about this particular game at this point, some of the commentators pointed out that to this point, Komsky had taken nearly an hour and a half for these first nine moves. We're on the ninth An hour move and now. a half. hour and a half, and, and Topolov had spent only a minute. So wow. Topolov was clearly prepared for this, this variation, and Komsky was surprised by it. It was obviously a surprise, because he had to really think through yes, for each him, one of these. This, right. you know, to respond in less than a minute, he had, he had already, Topolov had already worked these out ahead of time. So, uh, so Komsky did not expect that the Komsky, uh, that the clearly Topolov he, played clearly this? Clearly he didn't. This, he didn't expect this long. All right. So, uh, so it's, so it's Komsky, White's ninth move, right. and he plays knight to c3, and this is the point at which Topolov started to think. He spent 20 minutes on his reply to this move. All right. Uh, all right. What he does here in response to uh, Tkomsky's uh, knight c3, well, he says, okay, I'll play knight g6 back here, protects the queen, uh, and uh, he's offering now the exchange of queens. He offers, he offers the exchange of queens, but there's no advantage to white at this point to exchange the queens. He's ahead in development. He's got his pieces out in, in aggressive uh, places. The black has not yet castled. And so it would be to black's advantage to exchange at this point. So mm -hmm. what he does is he's looking for an aggressive square to put the queen. He plays the queen to h5 for his 10th move. All right. So the queen to h5, and I can see in this position, the white also is threatening on the next move to bring in this knight, the right. d5, attacking the, the queen, queen, also attacking down here, over here, forking the king, yeah, and Opening also, up to a check later. Yes, so this, this is dangerous. So this knight coming into d5, right. uh, it, it has to be stopped. So what uh, Topolov did on his 10th move, he played c6. Right. Comes in. Keeps the knight out of d5, but at the same time attacks the bishop right. on b5. Right, and attacking the bishop with a pawn, I mean, it's going to force white to do something about it. But um, Komsky takes, uh, takes advantage of a, of a sort of in-between, an intermediate move, something that's more threatening. He's going to attack the queen on uh, his 11th move. He's going to play the bishop to g5, attacking black's queen. All right. So we have an attack on the queen, and this, as you said, is an intermediate move. He, you he's going to have of, to do something. He's going to have to do something. And actually, the Germans actually have coined a term for this. They, they called it a, a Zwischenzug. 
but uh, it's, it's an inter intermediate move, in-between move. All right, so, so now he has to blunt this attack on the, uh, the queen, so he plays on the 11th move, Topolov, F6. So now he's, at now he's attacking, attacking both, both bishops. bishops. But his queen is in front of the king, and so one thing that a player in this kind of situation where you're ahead in development, you've got some threats, you want to keep trying to pile on the threats, he's going to play his rook on a1, the twelfth move is the rook on a1, it's going to go to e1, attacking the queen, which is pinned against the king. The queen can't move. That's right. Look at, now this is a, an amazing position. You see that all the white's pieces are developed. And he's got, he's got, he's, he's attacking the queen. Right. Uh, the knight can't move, move the queen can't is move. pinned. All right, so this is, so there's only one way to get out of this. Is he, he's got to block this attack uh, with the rook on the queen. So he plays the knight from c5 to e6. Right. So that is his 12th move, move. knight right. e6. So now, well now, um, Komsky has to do something about these two bishops. Yes. And again, he's going he's gonna to get them out of trouble by taking the white squared bishop and attacking the knight on g6. So his, his 13th move is going to be bishop to d3, attacking this pawn, threatening to take it with check. Um, if, and, he can't, and it can't, he can't be capture recovered the, because, the because the queen would actually win take the, the, take with the rook with check. Right and be a, a, a piece up. Right. All right, so what the Topolov does here after bishop d3 is, he says, okay, uh, there's no way I, uh, he, he, you know, I, I, I can stop this. So he, he, he just castles. He says, I'll castle now on his 13th move. Right, so now, he's got, now he needs to get the other bishop out of trouble. So he's going to retreat it, bishop to d2. All right. And that's his 14th move. All right. So. Topolov. What does he do here? Again, this threat is still uh, here to take here. So, uh, and, he, and he can't move this knight. At no time can he move this knight. This knight can't actually move, say, to, to e5. Because it, it opens up actually the attack on here, the ch check here. In fact, in fact, it'd be mate. It'd be actually a mate here. We say mate here. Check here. Right. The king has to move here to h8. The bishop moves to g6. Discovered check. The king only has one move to g8. And the queen to h7 is checkmate. Right. So, All right. Can't, can't. so that so this knight can never move. So we'll put it back to this position. So in this position, and the other knight can't move because it's pinned against the queen. Exactly. So what uh, Topolov does? He plays d5 on his 14th move. Right. And it's actually an excellent move. It frees up. It gives him some space. It frees up a, a space for his right. uh, his bishop. And in a situation like this, now he's, he's got his rooks aimed down at the king, he's got his bishops aimed, he needs to find a way to continue in the attack, which he does by playing the pawn, his uh, 15th move is pawn to f4. And what is he threatening? By playing f4? Well, he's threatening in his next move to fork two knights. Oh, and threatening to win a piece. Right. All right. So, uh, what Topolov does in response to f4, he plays queen c5 check. Right. All right. Now, the difficulty, the clock comes to be a factor again. Where he took an hour and a half for those first nine moves, he now only has eight minutes left to finish the next 25 moves. Oh, that's so he's got 20 seconds per move that he can spend thinking. So now he's, yes. he's really gotten himself. He's, he has a good position, yes. but he doesn't have the time to work out all the complications. All right. Um, so he, he could have possibly blocked the check with bishop to e3, which some commentators feel was a much better move, mm -hmm. what he chose to do was play the king to h1 uh, to clear the check. All right. So in response to that, Topov plays d4 on his 16th move, Oops. attacks the knight. Well, also, text. Oh, queen. yes. It also, at the same time, <laughs> uh, yes, it, it, again, the queen is protected here, but yeah, it uncovers an attack on the queen. Right. So we have a double so, attack. Right. So, again, uh, Komsky doesn't want to trade queens yet. Um, it wouldn't be to his advantage to do that. So he's going to block. He's, he's going to block that attack, and he's also threatening now to take this bishop on e6. Check. Now that takes away the defender for the black queen, and he could win the queen. All right. So there is a threat of it taking with check and winning the queen. Right. All right. So what uh, Topolov does after bishop f5? Well, he says he has to avoid this uh, check, so he plays rook f7. That's his 17th move, rook okay. f7. And now he's going to, now the, the knight's attacked, he's going to move the knight and in turn attack the queen. He's going to play the knight to e4, attacking the queen. All right, so now the queen has to move, 
And the queen, if we get a, a, a camera on a, what, what black cannot do, black cannot be greedy and go down and capture this pawn on c2. Why not? Because, um, we'll see, you see that the bishop is on the same diagonal, and the knight can take this pawn with check, exposing the queen to, and winning the queen. And would win the queen. Right. All right, so that's a poison pawn. So what Topolov does, he plays queen d5. He comes over here, still maintains the pin on this, this right. bishop, cannot move. Well, the bishop actually could move, uh, take on g6 and, and protect itself, but what, uh, what does uh, uh, Komsky do here? Well, now what he does is he takes... Oh, he does take. He does take. He, he, plays, does. he takes... Bishop takes on g6. Right. And again, the bishop now is protecting, protecting the, queen, the queen. So it would be a mistake for, for black to take the queen on g5. He would just lose a piece. Because he would lose a piece because right. the bishop would be recaptured. Right. All right. So what... Uh, top of this, he's forced. His move is forced. He has to play h takes g6. Right. Takes with the, with the pawn. Attacks the, uh, the queen. And again, keeping in mind that Komsky only has an average of 20 seconds per move now to, to make up his mind, he could have taken the pawn on uh, g6, and which, when you and I were talking about this earlier, we felt it probably would have kept up the pressure. Yes, it seems like a reason he gets his pawn back. Remember, right. he's been, he gave up a pawn you know, early in the game, right. and it, he gets it back here. And he, but what he chose to do was now he chose to trade queens, which has a a strategic or positional advantage because it, it doubles up. Um, right. Okay, double. so what happens here is that the, he takes back, actually, C takes D5. Five on black's 20th it, move. It, it doubles the pawns. Right. Right. All right, so now what do we have here? Well, now by, when, with that pawn move, uh, he attacks the knight again, so the knight has to go. And the knight has a square where he attacks the rook. All right. So an attack on the rook on F7. Uh, so the rook has to move, and the rook, pl uh, he plays on his 21st move, rook c7. Right. Comes down here. Right. And right. That, that, as it turns out, was probably the winning move, because uh, the, the game, up, up to this point, Komsky had a, had a really solid game, and, and a lot of commentators felt he had the advantage, but from here on, it, it deteriorates pretty quickly. So what does he uh, do? Well, he plays pawn to, the, the pawn to c4. All first. right. And now Black uh, Topolov takes en passant. passant right. This is uh, where the pawn on the fifth rank can take a pawn on the, uh, on, on, well, actually it's uh, Black's, from Black's perspective, fifth rank, takes the pawn as if it had moved only right. one square. And so he recaptures with his bishop. Bishop takes c3. Three. That's okay. the 23rd move. 23rd move. And Black responds with d4 attacking the bishop. Right. It, it, bishop can't take it because it's protected by the knight on e6. So he he wouldn't gain any he wouldn't gain anything coming back. In fact, he'd probably, you know, cause more trouble than it's worth. So he plays bishop to b4 protecting the knight, putting okay. the bishop on a more active diagonal problem. And also, is there a threat if we look at this position uh, that we're analyzing? Is there a threat after this bishop e4 of taking, with this knight right. taking the bishop on c8, right. and then on the recapture, that, that the rook would win the knight on, knight. E, on the e6. Right. All right, so that is a threat. All right, so what do we have here? In response to bishop b4, well, bishop, he, he moves, moves the, the bishop, bishop to the d7. Right. So now the bishop cannot yeah. be captured. It, it still and protects it, and the it knight. also it protects this square, which will become critical later. Okay, so what does Komsky do on his 25th move here? Um, and wh what actually must Kamsky of, uh, you know, prevent Black from doing oh, with this rook? Um, coming, coming down, is, is this right. dangerous? He, yeah, he can't allow this rook down to the seventh. So he, he, he's going to protect, his white is going to protect his second rank by moving up one of the rooks, prevents rook to, because a, a rook on, down, a rook down this far is, is, is a serious disadvantage. Yes, that should be avoided. You should right. never allow your try to avoid your opponent to put put a rook or rooks on the right. on the seventh right. rank. Yeah. All right. So here's where Black Topolov on his twenty uh, fifth move attacks the bishop with a five. Right. All right. So the pawn and now attacks the bishop. So he, now he's going to back up to a three. Okay. A three. And now uh, Topolov continues. On his, on his move, b5 uh, is Threatening to trap the bishop. Yes, the b4 is, so is now he, threatened. He's right, threatening so, to win the bishop. So he's got to give himself some running room, so he has, he has to play pawn to bishop 3. All right. And Topolov continues with the attack on the bishop. He plays b4. 
Right, and the bishop has to retreat, at least to this point, attacking this pawn, if nothing else, but gets okay. it out of the way. And you can see how, in just a few moves, Topolov has completely changed his position. He's got, he's, he's wide, his rooks are wide open, his bishop has play. All right. You know. All right. So now Topolov, with his move, plays rook a6, which attacks, attacks the, the knight, undefen the knight right. undefended. Right. So the knight has to move. To and, save itself. and here, again, when we were talking about this earlier, it looked as though bringing the knight back here would have blocked this, this important file, mm -hmm. um, but probably, again, because of time pressure, he, was, he had under a minute left at this point. He had to, he played knight to e4. Okay. So now, Topolov, what does he do here? Well, he doubles his rooks. He plays the rook on, on the a6 and plays it to c6. He has total control of the C file. Right. Uh, and, uh, by doubling here. And Komsky decides he needs to get his king into play, so he plays king to g1. All right. So now it's time, after the, the rooks have been doubled, that the rook can go down to c2. Rook c2 is Topolov's move. And uh, is he threatening something here? Well, he's, he is threatening um, by, if, he, if at this point he was to play rook take rook, and the king recaptures, then he wins this oh, pawn. Oh, he would lose this pawn on f4. Right. All right, right. So, uh, so how do we prevent that? Well, the, the, the only really, he decides to defend it by playing pawn to g3 for his 31st move. Right, protects the pawn here. Right. And now Topolov plays d3. This pawn, right. he's advanced, this is his past yep. pawn. An old, old saying that, you know, past pawns must be pushed. Right. And so... Uh, Komsky is going to try to stop it. He puts his rook onto d1, get at that in front of it. All right. Hopefully, you know, trying to pile onto that uh, d2 square. All right. But is this going to help? Is he going to get this? Is he going to win this pawn? Unfortunately, he, uh, Komsky now o o uh, underestimated uh, Topolov's next move, which was f5. And on f5, Komsky resigned. Why right. did he resign? I mean, the knight, the knight can move. The knight right. actually... Well, the knight, the, knight can go, the knight can go to safety. Yeah, it can go but, to g5. But the threat is, again, rook take rook, and once the king takes back, then the other rook comes down with check, winning the bishop. Yeah, let's show our viewers that. If he, if he, he resigned in this position, but if he had played the knight to g5, what you're saying is rook takes... Rook on takes f, rook on f2, f2. The king recaptures. King recaptures. F2. And now this rook moves down to... C2 attacks the king and the bishop, and is going to win this piece. Right. So that would put him a piece ahead. And at that level of chess, uh, being a piece ahead is enough to resign. Oh, sure. So this was a, a game that, that Komsky lost. He got himself in the time pressure, serious yeah, time serious pressure. Yeah, serious time pressure. He, you said that he spent, an, what, an he hour and a half? He spent an hour and a half on the first eight or nine moves. Yeah. And then by the time he got to the 15th move, he had only 18 minutes left to reach the 40-move time. They had to complete 40 moves in two hours. Yes. So as of the 15th move with 25 moves to go, he only had eight minutes left. Okay. Well, I'm sure his father was very disappointed in his son's performance because his father, when he, when he came with his son to this country in 1989, he, had, he lived vicariously through his son. He says, my son can become world champion. He says, in fact, he said any child can become world, a world champion if you're willing to put a lot of work into it. And uh, he, subje he, took his, he, could, he took his son Gata out of school and subjected him to a 14-hour-a-day regimen of chess study. Uh, and he deprived his son of uh, no friends, uh, no hobbies, no social life. This is no way to live. But uh, he, was, uh, he was bent on making his son a world champion. And, of course, after uh, Komsky lost this, uh, this match, this world championship match to Anatoly Karpov, he quit, as I say, he quit chess, but he's made a comeback, and let's hope that, uh, that, that Komsky will, will stay with it and will not quit chess again and go through a, a long period of which he stays away from chess. So I hope our viewers enjoyed this game that uh, Marty and I presented. Uh, it was from the, uh, the game, second game of the uh, uh, Veselin topolov gata Komsky match that ended in Sofia, Bulgaria uh, on February 26, 2009. And Topolov now, number one player in the world, will play Vishwanathan Anand of India for the world title later this year. Join us for the next edition of Chess Chat.